Hello, everybody. My name is Max Steinberg. I'm a partner at SaberSim and a daily fantasy professional. And today I'm going to share with you a pretty extensive video that just goes over my entire NBA process, essentially from start to finish. Now, aside from this brief intro, this video is going to be totally unscripted. It's really just going to show you how I use SaberSim so you can get some ideas of how to use it effectively, how to use it more effectively. Maybe you're new, how to use it at all. Um, this is not the end all be all to processes. Everyone has their different process, but I think my process is a good starting point to just sort of get an idea of, of what to do, right? So um, right now I'm going to share my screen and show you what I have up, which is SaberSim and a few other things. So. As always in these videos, all the tools that I'm going to use, I'm going to use outside tools, but all these tools are going to be completely free to use. And so just meaning that these are gonna be really accessible to anyone, right? Um, nothing is behind a paywall. So without further ado, here we go. So just to keep in mind, I actually haven't looked at the slate at all, right? And so one thing I always do just to start off my session is I'll just build lineups, right? Is I wanna just see what players I am getting with some of the default settings, because that's going to tell me where to look at, right? The first step of my process is adjusting projections, right? Is I want to make sure I'm honing in my player projections and making sure they're good. And so I'm just gonna start out building a bunch of lineups, right? And seeing what I get and taking some notes of that, right? And so we can see a few things here already, right? Is Jalen Brunson, we're getting a lot, okay? Um, that says to me that there's some injury on Dallas. We're gonna get there in a second. I, I didn't know that. Chetty Osmond, we're getting a lot. There might be some injury on Cleveland as well with Dean Wade. So I might make some notes, look at Dallas, uh, look at Cleveland, maybe look at Jalen. Bronson slash guards, look at um, Cleveland big men. My guess is someone like Evan Mobley might be out or just there's some big men out. I'm not really sure. Um, let's see here. Um, I can do this with FanDuel as well because we want to get some ideas here as well. Uh, so let's see. Clint Capella is interesting. Patty Mills on Brooklyn, that might suggest an injury. So maybe look at Brooklyn, Patty Mills, things like that. Um, this is a great jumping up point, right? Another thing to look at maybe is just look at maybe Basketball Monsters. So this is Basketball Monsters player news page. And this is actually where I like to go to get my injury updates and news updates, right? Is they update really fast. It's in a really easy to read format. You can see who's still questionable and we're gonna get to that a little later of how to use that and who might be already out, giving you a good idea. You can see with Cleveland, Jarrett Allen is out, Lori Markinen is out. So there are players out for that team. I think with Dallas, let's look here. Uh, Luka Doncic is out, obviously. Okay, so that makes a lot of sense of why we're getting a lot of Jalen Brunson, right? And uh, we just got some news on Miami and it looks like, yeah, some Miami news. So we're gonna take that into consideration. There's a lot to take into consideration. And uh, so we're just gonna head right into it. So basically my NBA process, it kind of like a waterfalls onto itself, right? Is I start looking up one time teams and I start looking up another team and it goes so on and so forth. So here's a few websites that I like to use in order to get a feel for a team, to make an adjustment on a team level, right? So let's just start out with Dallas, right? So there's going to be a few key things to look at here, right? Is we can look at this website called Popcorn Machine and it gives you this idea of, you know, how lineups sort of shake out. As you can see, um, Dallas starting lineup is usually this, and you can actually look at Fantasy Labs and they'll give you projected lineups, which is really nice. They can give you an idea of like, okay, what 
what do they think is going to be started in the lineup here? So it seems like essentially the only difference is Luka Doncic is out and we think Jalen Brunson is going to start. So a question there is, is we might not have that information before lock. So it'd be interesting maybe to, to check that out, right? So one thing I look for is popcorn machine. Okay, who is going to be playing point guard for Luka Doncic? I think there's basically one option, which is Jalen Brunson, who seems to actually kind of play combo guard. Um, and then Frank Nitkalina, who's kind of like a defensive specialist, right? Um, and one thing to look at is establish the run also has this free NBA depth chart. And so I might want to look at Dallas and say, okay, who, you know, Trey Burke, maybe he's going to play, although maybe he's not in the rotation. That's something to look at. Frank Nitkalina as a guard, Sterling Brown, maybe could play point guard. And there's a good note here that said, uh, well, this is with the Rockets, but so it seems like Jalen Brunson is going to be the guard. I'm curious what Sabersim is showing with Dallas here in general. So we might filter them out and just look. So it seems like we're projecting Frank Nitkalina. We're projecting Trey Burke a little bit, and we're projecting Jalen Brunson a little bit, right? So one thing that's interesting here is my guess is a sort of one of two things could happen here, right? Is Trey Burke could not play. See, this is sort of the interesting thing about NBA is there's a lot of minutes unknowns and a lot of your adjustments you're going to make is going to have to do with minutes adjustments. And when you have such an unknown situation like this, there you, you actually don't really know what's going to happen. And they, there's sort of this key pivot point, which is if Trey Burke plays, even though he might not be in play, like he's not someone that I, I might play at all, that can affect Frank Nicolino's minutes and that could affect Jalen Brunson's minutes and can sort of just affect where we go. So one thing to look at as well, which I'll open a new tab for, there's really NBA, you can, you can really just sort of go down the rabbit hole looking stuff. But what I like to do is go to basketballreference.com and look at Luka Doncic and look at his game logs and just see, okay, has he missed a game this season? And the answer is no. So this is a completely unknown situation. Another thing you can do is I'm going to look at fantasy labs, right? I'm going to look at this on-off tool. So a lot of people use this tool to sort of be like, oh, how's someone's usage when this player is not playing? I actually like to use it to sort of tell me where a coach might go if the starting lineup remains intact and who, who they like to play if it, with the starting lineup if Luka Doncic is off the court, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, Dorian Finney-Smith, uh, Tim Hardaway Jr., let's just look at what the starting lineup is, Dwight Powell and Porzingis. I'll maybe leave Powell off of there because usually bigs are kind of flexible, but Porzingis is obviously going to be a player who plays a lot, right? So I'm going to look at these players, and I'm going to look at when Luke is off the court and sort of determine, okay, what do they like to do here? Okay, this hasn't happened that often, but it seems like they do like to play Jalen Brunson at point guard quite a bit. So I think my conclusion here, just looking at Dallas, is essentially I think we're projecting this well, right? We've had some confirmation by a lot of different sources that Jalen Brunson is probably going to start. And let's be real, even if he doesn't start, I'm sure he's going to play 28, 29 minutes. He's a key player. So I think this minute projection seems pretty good. And the question is, is do I, we think Trey Burke is going to play? Now, one thing I like to look at is just rotations in general, right? Is like, does Dallas like to play nine or 10 players? Usually these coaches that like to go wide rotations will continue to go wide rotations when there's an injury, right? And so if we look at Dallas and sort of just say, okay, let's just like look at their game versus San Antonio. It seems like they do like to go 10, 10 man rotation. So I feel like this idea of Trey Burke, um, you know, playing like 11 minutes actually makes a lot of sense. And um, it just, I, I think we're, we're actually handling this pretty well. One thing I am getting from this is Jalen Brunson, it's kind of hard to, I don't know how to explain this other than you essentially are just, you know, a player like Jalen Brunson who is a high FP per 36 player and people who are replacing the star player usually get high ownership. 
So my guess is his ownership projection is going to end up being higher than this. So I'm just going to make a note here and say Jalen Brunson. And I'm going to say Dallas. And I'm going to say ownership should be high. And then I'm going to raise his ownership projection before all is said and done, right? Okay, um, so that's it for Dallas. Um, I actually don't think I'm going to tweak many projections here. I think we're handling this pretty well. I might maybe 21 minutes for Nick Kalina when I think Burke is probably going to play. It might be a little high, so maybe I'll lower Nick Kalina, but he's probably not in play. But I'll, I'll just remember that, and if I don't, it's fine, right? Um, okay, let's look at another thing, right? Is I made the note to look at Cleveland. So if we look at Cleveland, we're going to go right here. And it does look like Evan Mobley is out. So they have an interesting situation here, right? Evan Mobley's out. Kevin Love, probably limited. He's really old. Um, that being said, he's a high FP for 36 player. Another thing to keep in mind is these teams, like teams in general, if they have a reason not to, uh, some trap you can fall into is that in NBA is thinking, okay, this big man is out. They're just going to replace it with equal minutes from a big man. That's a usually not the way it works. Usually these teams will, you know, just go small. They'll get creative. They'll play for guards. They'll do a lot of weird stuff. And so um, in these situations, you can sometimes see sort of spike minutes at a different position than big man. So it's sort of interesting to look at. Um, so again, let's just do what we, do always go to Cleveland on Fantasy Labs. They think the starters are going to be Kevin Love, Dean Wayne, Chetty Osman, Okoro, and Garland. Okay, this is a possibility. Again, let's look at, at this, this tool, right, and go to Cleveland. We don't know, and let's just actually look at Basketball Monster, because if this is an early game, we might get this information, but we actually might not. And so it's, and given it's a um, 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 start time. It's nice to look into just to prepare in case that we don't get this information of who the starters are. So again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say um, let's see, Darius Garland, Isaac Coro are definitely the clear starters. And then let's see who started last time. Um Third for, for Boston, they had a Cora, Dean Wade, Garland, Rubio, Mobley. So this is interesting. This is interesting because Cora, Dean Wade, Garland, Mobley. Okay. So we don't think Ricky Rubio is going to start, but it's actually possible that he does. So let's look at this. So we should do Osman, Okoro, Wade, basically, and Carlin. I guess this actually probably makes sense, but let's like look at this for a second and say Wade, Acora, Garland, and see what comes up here. So we're going to say Wade, Acora, Garland, and we're going to say off the court, Jared Allen, Evan Mobley, and let's see what happens here. So again, not many minutes with this, but as you can see, they're sort of Ricky Rubio, Denzel Valentine can get some minutes with this lineup. Maybe if we get rid of Dean Wade, let's see sort of what happens here and see if there's anything there. No. Interesting. So I'm just kind of looking for lineup combinations here to see if I can see anything. So Chetty Osman, they like playing with Carlin, Dean Wade, they do. So this is interesting. So what this says to me is Ricky Rubio is not going to start. He might get more minutes than we expect. Someone like Chetty Osman or Dean Wade might get less minutes than we expect. Um, so let's just look at the depth chart here. If you look at minutes, you can see Garland gets the most. Chetty Osman, Dean Wade, um, right here, Okoro, Kevin Love. I think this is sort of, I'm just going to, you know, actually we can look this up, right? Of 
Let's look at his game logs and just see how many minutes he's been playing. So he actually hasn't even played more than 24 minutes a season. And something to keep in mind is he hasn't played in a while. So, and he wasn't starting when he was playing. So I actually have some doubts that he's going to start at all. Um, and it's possible they're going to start someone like Denzel Valentine. Um, it's possible they're going to start someone like Ricky Rubio and go small. It is Brooklyn, I think they're playing. So that makes a lot of sense. Um, they also might be real bad defensively. So that's kind of interesting is, you know, someone like James Harden. I might want to be a little high on because of matchup. Mobley is like a really, really known as a really, really good defensive player. But so I think here I'm thinking, okay, let's think about this for a second. Dean Wade's definitely going to start. Chetty Osman, is he going to start? Or is Kevin Love going to start? I think it's possible that Kevin Love does not start. It's also possible that he does start. And luckily, actually, if you just look at Kevin Love's page here, um, basketball reference will tell you if he starts and he has not started the season. So this says to me that I think we can actually be a little higher on Ricky Rubio here and just assume they play small, but Saberson is actually doing a good job here because they actually have him getting 33 and a half minutes. So we're actually kind of confirming this Rubio protection, right? We're saying, oh, his minutes are high and he actually probably is going to play a lot of minutes. Denzel Valentine might be sneaky. Someone like Taco Fall is a really high FP for 36 player. So if you think they're gonna get blown out, he, he can have some potential, but might be too low here. But I think, I think in general, the minutes projections are good and I wouldn't really change anything here. Maybe, it seems like maybe we think Rubio is going to start and I don't know if that's true. So um, I might be willing to lower Rubio a little bit because I think they can get kind of weird with minutes here and maybe someone like Denzel Valentine can start. So maybe we'll just make an ad to lower Ricky Rubio here because those minutes do seem too high, given that, you know, there's conflicting stuff about him starting. I would be bullish on his minutes because of him coming off the bench, but not in this situation. So maybe a lower Rubio's minutes a bit. Again, when there's something that's unknown, we're going to do our best to estimate it, but those are the things that we're going to get wrong a lot of the time, right? So um, let's see one more thing here and look at Brooklyn with Patty Mills, because we did get a lot of Patty Mills. And I just want to see what's up with that, because that's really interesting, right? So Nick Claxton is out and Joe Harris is out. So it's kind of interesting. And my guess is Patty Mills is going to play off the bench, but I know this team, he's a veteran and this team likes, probably going to like to use him. So um, let's see here, Patty Mills. No, he didn't even play last game. So let's see another game here. Okay, so as you can see, Patty Mills is like a pretty key player and he actually started the second half for Joe Harris in a similar situation. So it seems like he could get minutes here. Um, and it's also Brooklyn and this isn't really an important game. So I worry a little bit here. My guess is these minutes are too high because if you actually look at Patty Mills, my guess is he hasn't started many games this season. He started one. So maybe we should look at what that game was, right? The benefit of NBA is there's a lot of games. So you can sort of just like, if you have a situation you don't know about, you can sort of just be like, okay, let's see. Oh, he actually did play the last game and he started. And he played 31 minutes. So let's see how that played out. Because I think I just didn't notice him. You're probably just like screaming at the screen right now. I'd be like, dude, he's starting. Yeah, there he is. And he actually played a lot of minutes, so maybe I'm wrong here. Although this was a way more important game. So my guess is they could kind of play a wider rotation. So I think I am going to actually lower him because I think there's some chance that he randomly doesn't start 
because it's the Nats and they might do something weird. They also, they're going to play a, a bigger rotation than last game. Um, so it might be a little lower on him. I kind of want to be high in James Harden because of um, this matchup, Bruce Brown or Kevin Durant do. So I might do both of them. But Patty Mills, maybe the minutes are a little too high. He is a bet and this game doesn't really matter. So, so basically, you know, right now it's 245, right? And so I can do this basically ad nauseum, right? I can, I can just do this forever. Depending on how much time you have, you can just keep doing this. You can just keep looking at the players you're getting. Maybe look at Kate Cunningham, someone like that, or Oklahoma City or someone like that. Look into matchups. You can just do this loop forever, right? So um, depending on how much time I have, I might start early and just start doing research like this so I can make these adjustments. But for the sake of this video not being too long and given you're getting the gist of what I'm doing, I'm sort of going to stop this and I might do it a little more offline before final runs. But something else I want to talk about before this is talking about prepping for um, questionables, right? So there's a couple of questionables here. And you might want to scour Twitter just to see like how questionable is this player really, right? But I think this is really important because you want to prepare your lineups for the situation that these questionable players are out or in, right? And because Saber Sim has late swap, which I'm sure you're familiar with, and if you, you're not, um, I'm going to show you this later in the day. But um, if you're not familiar, I suggest you watch your late swap video. But because we have late swap, we don't really have to exclude questionable players. We're going to just be able to, to do this later and either get those questionable players in or out, depending on whether they're in or out. But one thing we want to do is sort of prepare for what might happen um, if these questionable players are out, right? So let's see Atlanta, okay? So Bogdan Bogdanovich, um, let's get rid of Brooklyn. Bogdan Bogdanovich and Kevin Werder could be out, right? If they are both out, what does this mean, okay? So one thing we could look at is just look at Bogdan's game logs. and see if he's missed a game. So he has missed one game. And that was when Kevin Herter played and he got a ton of minutes. So Kevin Herter was out too. If you're just looking at this, it seems like it's pretty clear that someone like Cam Radish could either start or get a lot of minutes, right? So in this situation, what I might actually do, especially because if you're looking at a salary, Cam Radish is a good value play. And this is an important game for Atlanta. What I might do is I might just boost. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep Bogdan and I'm going to keep Kevin Werder, although it doesn't really matter. I'm probably not going to get them. They're not really great value. But what I might do is I might boost Cam Reddish here a decent amount. And what I'm going to do is before this game starts, I'm going to late swap. And when I late swap, Basically, my lineups are going to have more of this player, which is going to give me more opportunity to get this player, right, if this happens. If it doesn't, then it's just going to, late swap is going to handle it for me. But I want to make sure that I prep my lineups for this situation, because if I do, it's going to allow me, A, more flexibility, because I'm going to be playing later players. I can just kind of get loose with this and, and do whatever. And it's going to make it so I can get more Cam Reddish in my lineups if this happens, right? Another really key one is Damian Lillard and Norwin Powell, right? So let's look at Popcorn Machine. Um, and let's look at Portland. And just see, okay, Portland. Both these players started la the last game they played. Um, and they're both questionable, right? Portland is notorious for playing the sort of huge minutes, right? Clear factor is Damian Lillard out, is out. CJ McCollum is going to play more point guard. He's going to be really good. And he's going to have to play more minutes because Norman Powell's out too. Like 
there could be a lot of ways that he'd be really good. Someone like Nasir Little could get more minutes. Someone like Anthony Simons could get more minutes. And so again, something that I might do is just look at Portland and do something where I'm just sort of prepping my lineups for the possibility of this happening. And I have to be a little careful because this is the last game. So there might not be other places to go if, you know, it, it turns out that these players are not playing and there, there might not be that many swaps to go to. So what I might do is try to, you know, boost CJ McCollum a little more. I'm going to do both of these things on FanDuel too, just so I'm prepared, right? So let's look at Cam Reddish and boost him a little bit. And then with Portland, we can boost CJ McCollum and we can boost Nasir Little. We can boost Anthony Simons a little bit. And so this is sort of like, I'm sort of prepping for this to happen and, and making sure that I, I get some of these players um, in my lineups in the event that this happens, which is really important, right? And it, it doesn't have to be ex that exact because I'm going to get it exact later, right? With basketball, late swap, you're going to late swap quite a bit. You're going to late swap a lot of days, especially in big slates like this. And because of that, you don't need to get as precise because you can get precise when you have to late swap essentially, right? And so we're going to make some adjustments here. And you sort of just want to go through the questionables. I guess one last one that's standing out to me is Kevin Porter Jr. Um, because you know, he's a high usage player, high minute player on Houston. And if he doesn't play, my guess is, let's just see. Okay, Jay Sean Tate, Jalen Green, Christian Wood. So Jalen Green, Jay Sean Tate, Christian Wood. Looking here, let's get our friend Kevin Porter out. And you can see that when this happens, there's a couple of things to go do. They either like to play Eric Gordon as the shooting guard, or they like to play DJ Augustin, right? So has Eric Gordon started a game? He probably has for this team. No, not this season, but he could. He's someone who started before. Uh, and Augustin, let's see if he's, he's started before, because that would be an interesting one. So he hasn't started for this team either. So it's sort of up in the air, but those two players might be in play um, if this happened. So, and again, we don't need to get rid of Kevin Porter Jr. We don't want to get rid of Kevin Porter Jr. Because, you know, a lot of people, if they don't have late swap, they're just going to get him out of their lineups. But he actually might be a pretty good play if he's in, right? And so what we want to do possibly is say, okay, TJ Augustine, he's not really in play, but maybe I'll boost someone like Eric Gordon a little bit, right? Because Kevin Porter Jr. is out, that's really good for him. So I'm going to want to get more of him. And maybe someone like Jalen Green, who would also benefit, he'd be more of the pure point guard instead. So that's something you want to do as well, right? And I don't know if uh, you watching are playing both sides. It makes it a little more complicated, but it's not actually that hard to, to manage. Let's just do the same thing here. And okay, right? So um, one thing to constantly be aware of too is we have this last updated thing on SaberSim that's going to show us when the projections are updated. If you've already adjusted projections, this is not going to change that, but for players that you haven't, it's going to update them with the newest information. You always want to make sure that you're doing this throughout the process, right? Because you, you want to have the most updated player projections with the injuries and everything and all that good stuff, right? And that's the reason that I'm sort of making notes instead of just doing adjustments off the bat is um, I want to make sure that, you know, I'm not, not taking into account the latest information by making adjustments. And so I'm going to just save that to the end before I do my final runs. But, um, and you know what, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to come back in a little bit and talk about the post-build process, talk about what to do in this part of the process. 
actually making those final adjustments, I might make a few more notes. And then I'm going to come back and show you what I do in the post build process to really hone in my lineups and make sure that they are good. So um, I'll be back shortly. Thanks, everyone. Okay, I am back. And we're now talking about, and we're about 30 minutes before lock. I want to talk about a few things that I did, just some more research, and then we're going to talk about the final part, or not the final part, but the, the part where I finalized my builds in this process. So a couple of things. One is I made a few more notes, um, and one of them had, some of it has to do with stuff we already talked about, like Kevin Durant. I think Cleveland's going to be a really good matchup without Evan Mobley, and we might not be taking that into consideration. So I want to boost him. One thing I want to talk about as well is there's some things that you can get the sense for with, especially a player like Giannis or these teams where, you know, you have a star player and um, their minutes can fluctuate a lot. You know, versus the Lakers, my guess is these guys kind of want to play more minutes. They want to perform better when they're playing the Lakers in front of LeBron, even though LeBron is not playing. Um, but it feels like an important game. So usually in those cases, a model's not going to really capture that, but I, I definitely want to be high on a, on a player like Giannis. Um, and then Oklahoma City, one thing that I love to look at, this is actually the NBA's website. It's just stats.nba, but they have a lot of great advanced stats. And I like to look at pace stats, and that's something Saber's going to take into consideration. But um, sometimes you can do something last X games or something like that. But Sometimes I, I like to look with all of this for a combination of things. And one thing I've noticed with the Rockets is their offensive efficiency is like total garbage. It's one of the worst in the league. And Kevin Porter Jr., which is one of their best offensive players, is could be out, so it could be worse. And their pace is one of the highest. So that says to me that they might be an underratedly good matchup for these guys who are like rebound defensive players, which is like basically is, is an example of this. Josh Giddy, I actually noticed, gets steals and blocks and rebounds. So I think it's a great matchup for them. Um, another person I looked at is Dwayne Deadman is starting again. And I looked at his popcorn machine and it seemed like he got actually pretty good minutes. And then he had butt. Jimmy Butler wasn't playing in this game. But I think if I look at this, if you look at Saber Sam, you can see, I think the last time we checked, we're projecting for around 27 minutes, 26 minutes. Let's see what it says here. 26. I think that's pretty reasonable, right? A lot of times with centers, I'm usually wary about the minutes, but we've already seen 30 minutes. And New Orleans plays Jonas Valanciunas at center. So they have a big center, so they need that size, and there's really no one else on the team to match that size. So I think this makes a lot of sense, and, and Deadman's someone that I definitely like, and Saberson likes too. You could even boost him if you want, right? So I just wanted to make those notes. So we're getting to the final part of the process. I have all my notes. So the first thing we're going to do is just execute all these notes, right? And I have multiple screens going, so I'm going to put this on the other side of the screen um, just so I can easily sort of um, make these adjustments. So I'm just going to go note by note. So we have Kevin Durant. So I'm just going to type in Durant and also make sure that these are the less updated projections and make sure that the timestamp is close to the time it is, which is. So let's see. Let's just go through these notes, right? Durant. I'm going to boost him. Again, I'm not going to be that exact. I, I want to boost him a couple points. I think this match looked really good. It's not that big of a deal not to be exact. This is essentially just going to raise my exposure to this player, and that's what I want, right? So I'm going to do this on FanDuel as well. And again, I'm going to have to refresh these projections. Um, Grant. Where are you? Where are you, Kevin? Oh, I see. I'm putting some filters on. Um, one thing to note as well, just FYI, I just noticed this. Um, and this is why I say this to them, because sometimes I forget about it. Werder and Bogdanovic are in. And if you remembered, I did this thing where I boosted Cam Reddish. I don't want to do that anymore. So I'm just going to get his projection back to where it was, um, since we know that. And 
you know, this is why I like to save this to the end again, because, you know, you can forget of those things. Okay, let's go to Giannis. This should just take a couple minutes. Guys, I hope you don't mind. So again, he's playing the Lakers. I think he's going to get up more for this game. This is sort of a basketball specific thing. Let's look at the Thunder guys. Again, I think this is a good matchup for particularly Giddy and maybe Baisley in particular. Um, and I sort of, the, these are the type of ones that I kind of like, especially with a guy like Baisley, because he, he's not, he's probably not going to get that much ownership. He's not a, a guy that people are going to be really clamoring for. So these sort of sneaky matchup plays can be pretty good. Okay. So Deadman we're fine with. Jalen Brunson. You know, I had the note that I think he's going to be high owned. We have him at 20% ownership. I think it's going to be more like 35 plus. I don't mind being a little aggressive there. So in Fandle, you can see his salary is a little higher. So maybe be like 25 here, right? Um, James Harden, it's him. It's a great matchup. Again, do I do I care about this being that exact? Not really. Ricky Rubio. So this was one again that we identified early, where it seemed kind of like we're projecting him as a starter. I don't know if that's going to happen. Uh, they could start Denzel Valentine, and if they do, I'm going to have to redo this because Denzel. But definitely something to look for a late swap because we're going to want to redo this once we get this, right? But he's someone I'm going to lower a little bit because he could come off the bench. He could get lower minutes. You know, he, he doesn't have to play with the starters at the end. I think this, this minute projection just seems a little too high. And, it, and it's just because it's an unknown situation, right? We're just projecting him in as being the starter. I don't know if that's true. Even if he does, I, I feel like there's downside there. Patty Mills, this one I feel a lot of conviction on because, you know, the Nats, you'll see this with teams as you get more experience in basketball. Like, these guys can easily just, like, go in 11-man rotation or something really stupid. And that freaks me out. And he could just surprisingly not start. I mean, we'll know that. But even so, like, I just don't think it's a guarantee that he plays these minutes at all. Um, so I'm, I'm definitely down to just be lower on him. Um, and you can see that by his minutes and his projection, he's not that high fantasy points per minute projection. So his upside might not even be that good. So it's fine. Last thing, here's a note. Um, this looks like all Thursday news. Um, where is this? Brendan Ingram, no longer on minutes restriction. That's something that we might not actually get right because you know, we're not taking that news into consideration, right? And if we look at New Orleans, maybe, maybe we'll make a manual adjustment, but it, we might not adjust enough, right? He played 32 minutes on a minutes restriction last game, and that was two days ago. So this probably is too low minutes. Um, he's a guy you can play a lot of minutes. So um, he's someone I'm going to raise as well because I, I don't think we're taking that in consideration. And I'm also just going to keep these guys in mind, okay? So now we're going to start building for our final build. And luckily for us, if we get any news, I might do a final build again, but for all intents and purposes, it's going to be your final one. One thing that a lot of players do, a lot of pros do, and something that I do as well is I do this no more than three players from the same team um, on these slates where there's five games or more. The thought is there's not, you can't really get upside with four players on the same team because there's the ball can only go around so much. And that's not necessarily true. You get into situations where there's value plays where um, you actually should. But in general, I like doing this restriction because I, I kind of don't want that. And there might be some, some dynamics that are hard to quantify in a simulator, like hot hand or something like that, that we might not be accounting for. And so, Good players do it, I do it, right? Keep the same settings. We're going to build 50 lineups. I'll expand my pool size to 1,000, but that's not that important. I don't mess with this min uniques thing. I usually do my stuff post-build. And 
I'm forgetting if I, yeah, I did this all on Fanduel too. And let's build on Fanduel as well. So again, gonna do the same stacking rule. No more than three players from the same team. Gonna build for a 150 max, right? So we're gonna get a little more aggressive. Gonna make my pool size a little better. We're gonna build. Okay. So here is the last part of the Saverson process. We're not the last part because we're gonna talk about light swap, but it's about like looking at post build and sort of honing in this process, right? So, you know, one thing that's unique with us is when you request 50 lineups, 150 lineups, we're gonna build you a lot more. That's gonna allow you to change your exposures in this way where you're going to be able to um, hone them in, like actually, you know, maybe don't be so leveraged on someone or, or do something like that, right? So there's a couple things that I'm thinking about right now, right? Is, is you're thinking about leverage. So I'm thinking about, okay, do I want leverage on this player? Um, how much leverage do I want to get? Things like that, right? Um, and maybe raising some exposure to some players that I just want, right? So you really, you know, this isn't complicated like football where you're looking at stacks. I'm usually just not even looking at stacks or stack types or anything. It's all about individual players, right? So Clint Capella, okay? He's playing Boston. Robert Williams is out. So they don't have a lot of size. So it probably actually is a decent matchup. Boston has been playing really badly. Um, and I actually do believe he probably will not get a ton of ownership. Maybe he'll get some. Um, that being said, I don't like having 92% exposure to anyone, and there's probably some ways he could fail. So I'm just going to sort of trim this exposure and make sure, you know, Clint Cabela doesn't ruin my lineups. Then there's someone like Jalen Brunson, right? I think he's going to get 35% ownership. Even with that, we're getting 88% exposure. So what that tells me is I think he actually is going to get more than 35% ownership, right? So I might just adjust that ownership projection, but I also might do something where I sort of get him like 50% and we can talk about top lineup stuff later, but maybe he's someone that I try to avoid in my top lineup um, for someone else because his value is not like so incredible that he's unavoidable, right? Chetty Osman, this is sort of an interesting one. I think there's some ways he fails. I think he will be popular as well. I might trim, trim his exposure a little bit. Tyler Hero, not worried about it. He seems great. Um, although he'll probably be popular too. So maybe, you know, there's, maybe we're underwriting his ownership a little bit there. So I might trim him a little bit, although he is expensive. But yeah. Um, I've seen people talk about this guy, Matthew, on, on Twitter. So he's someone who's interesting. Um, and then let's see, Giannis, right? I think this is a really important game. He could have slate breaking upside. He's someone that I might say, okay, let's raise, raise his exposure a little bit. Um, and we're just honing, honing stuff in like that, right? And Kevin Durant, maybe I want a little more of him, right? Okay, so last thing, right? So we have some questionables here. See, interesting, okay, here we go. Ed Davis is starting for Cleveland. So it's not Rubio. Um, and so that means I might need to re, I oh, know Rubio is starting and Ed Davis is starting. So that means Kevin Love is not starting. And if I understand that correctly, that means that Chetty Osman is not starting, right? So that's interesting. This is really great actually, right? So there's a couple of things I can do here, okay? Oh, and Marvin Bagley's in the rotation. So there, there's a lot of stuff to do here. So I actually think I'm just gonna redo my entire runs because this is really important news, right? So I might have to move a little faster, but I'm not worried, okay? So one thing we just wanna look at real quick, is I want to look at Sacramento because I want to see if Bagley was even projecting the rotation. And he was a little bit, but I'm, I'm getting that he's going to play more than six and a half minutes. So B 
before we rerun, I, I'm definitely going to lower Metu. So let's see. Yeah, let's refresh these. We act really fast, by the way. 334. So my guess is in a couple minutes, we're going to have an update for Cleveland. Um, but just to consider it, right, is looking at Sacramento, again, I think Marvin Bagley, if we don't update this, if he's going to be in the rotation, that means like 12 to 14 minutes. And if we look at NBA depth charts, um, you can see that he plays Matu's position. So that's someone like when you see this stuff, you want to watch out for it and make sure that this doesn't affect the players that are in your lives. Because if it does, you want to make sure that you're accounting for it. So, um, Given that we have 20 minutes left, I'm going to wait for Cleveland to update, which might take a little bit, but we'll just wait. Um, and if in two minutes we don't, then um, I'll take into account. I think talking about Ed Davis, because it's like, oh, Ed Davis is starting, right? He's unplay. I mean, I think he's unplayable, okay? Like, a lot of times these guys, these teams will play start a center, and then they just won't be a part of his game plan. I think Ed Davis probably at 16 to 20 minutes or something like that. Kevin Love, I assume, actually might play less than um, we're projecting even. Because we look at like Kevin Love, he's on a minutes restriction. What does that mean? That might mean like 20 minutes, right? So let's just keep refreshing until we get something here. Soon. I mean, it's literally been... A minute. Okay, so and Kevin Porter Jr. is now doubtful, right? So um, again, we're we're up against time here. Luckily, Saverson works fast, so we don't need to worry that much. Um, but and also, we're going to be able to late swap later, so it's it's not a big deal. Like maybe at 15 minutes after lock, the Houston situation becomes more clear, and you just late swap, um, so you don't need to worry that much. Let's keep refreshing until we get an update here. Still now. Um, if, okay, Matthew's still starting. That's good. But again, I think we're underwriting these Bagley minutes. And I, I, I'm glad I'm showing this to you guys real time because I think it's an interesting spot, right? Is we have 18 minutes left. Am I worried? I'm not worried because Saberson works really quickly. Um, I might even hard refresh this because I just really want to see the update. So usually we can actually go to, this is something to consider too, go to the Saberson user Slack and you can go to NBA lineup alerts. And let's see. Okay, so we've started updating the Sims. So you can sort of go here and you can see, okay, Sims are being updated. Once it says that the Cleveland Brooklyn one is finished, I can then refresh and it'll be updated and see it's completed. And now you can go here. And you can see that we're updated, right? You look at Cleveland and you can see Ed Davis is in the lineup and we're not giving him a lot of minutes, right? Seven minutes. So, then Ricky Rubio is starting, so I might just um, refresh him there. Let's see. Again, we okay, we completed it twice, so I'm just going to refresh this one more time. Um, okay, so let's get to work here, right? We have 16 minutes. Let's do it again. So, going to do this. We lowered Ricky Rubio's minutes projection. That makes sense because there's a new person in the lineup. I see now he has 16 minutes. Okay, so. The other thing is they're playing Brooklyn. Brooklyn can play really small. I'm going to say that I probably actually don't. I think he could even play less minutes than this. So I'm going to actually be a little low on him. Maybe I'll do 19. Okay. Um, but now we have this Cleveland update, and I don't have to worry about it. Kevin Love, 21 minutes. There we go. I think this makes a lot more sense for where he's actually at. 
Um, and then Chetty Osman, 30 minutes makes a lot more sense. These, these all make a lot more sense. Denzel Valentine's probably not in play. Okay, so we have that done. Um, now the Sacramento situation, right? We were talking about. Um, Marvin Bagley, we have him in seven minutes. I think he's going to play more like 14, right? Which means this guy, Matu, not as good. So we're just going to lower him. And this might not actually update in time, but since we have to do final rounds, we want to make sure we take this into consideration. Last thing, Kevin Porter Jr., right? Um, he's out. So we're going to look back at Houston. So we have Kevin Porter out, but we have not updated the projections here, right? So do we have time? Do we have time to wait? I think I might. I might not. So I'm just going to do this on my own, but luckily we can sort of do this for you. So quick thing with this is... When you have a situation like this, it's actually pretty simple. You can just essentially um, you can just boost the guards, basically, and sort of boost everyone, and you're going to be fine. Maybe boost some of the guards more than others. And he's playing 30 minutes, so this is um, a lot of stuff. So you can just sort of go like this, and you're fine. So that's what I'm going to do. OK, cool. Now we're going to do final builds. I know. I, hold on. Somehow I switched to FanDuel dirt this time. Dang. OK, well. I don't even know what Saber Sim's going to do here. Okay, so let's oops, not that. let's go to stack. Again, Marvin Bagley, we have a 10 minutes. It's a little better, but I still want to lower him. I think there's downside here. And then Houston. See, we still haven't updated this, but maybe we have now. Yeah, it's still not updated. So I'm just going to do it myself. Make sense? Okay. I think this actually may have already updated, but it's kind of hard to tell. <laughs> Let's see. Okay. My back's against the wall, so I really have to actually just start doing this. So I'm just going to start doing it and not worry about it too much. Okay. So we're going to make 50 lineups, same rules. We're going to act a little quicker because uh, obviously I need to uh, work more quickly because time is of the essence. And you know what? I think I forgot to do it, Davis. It's really good that Saverson works fast because otherwise I'd be really screwed here. Yeah, so I want to lower him a bit. So I'm going to actually end this one to a new build. Okay, let's build. I think I just like, I don't know, never mind. Okay, so we are building. Fun, 11 minutes left. Make sure to keep your eyes on the news. Keelan Martin is starting. Something I could look at if I had more time. Um, but, okay, couple things here. Let's go over this again. Jalen Brunson, don't want to have a little less leverage on him, right? Clint Capella, I don't want this much exposure to a player. And then there was Giannis. I was hoping to get a little more exposure to him since it's an important game. Checking to make sure that nothing is too crazy here. You know what, maybe I'll lower Dean Wade a bit since they might play Taco Fall too. So it's sort of not as great of a situation for him.
Okay. So we can hone in exposures a little more and I'll, I'll show you something that I do in this situation. So we go to save um, and let's name this final or I've only done one, but you can actually rename this. We're gonna go to entries. I already uploaded my entries from DraftKings. Fill a contest with lineup. We can do unique, exact match. I'm just gonna do a rank. I usually do rank. So this is gonna, actually goes pretty crazy. It's gonna make it so my top lineup's really good. I'm gonna show you how, how I deal with that. So we're gonna download entries. Okay, great. We're gonna go to FanDuel, do the same thing. Lower this exposure to Capella. Um, and then we're going to look at some things here to Dean Wade was the guy I wanted to lower exposure to. Going to raise to Giannis because, again, I feel like this is an important game. Oh, and I forgot about the last thing. You know what? I should. This is, this is why. Uh, the last thing I want to say, okay, is the early games here, Indiana, Detroit, Washington, Charlotte, right? I don't want, I want less exposure to those games because those games are going to give me less flexibility. So sometimes I'll just, well, we can just do this here. You can look at who you have the highest exposure to and be like, okay, does this game contain Indiana, Detroit, Washington, or Charlotte? You have Kate Cunningham here, right? I might just straight up lower to 20% exposure, especially if this is a value play, right? Indiana, Malcolm, Brogdon, I might go eight. So I don't have a lot of time to do this, but you get the picture. Basically, you just lower these early exposure players. Let's say final. And then final. Fill with Frank. We can download the new entries. And then we're going to do the same thing with FanDuel. Uh, do we see Detroit Kate Cunningham? Right. So I'm going to lower him. Isaiah Stewart, going to lower him. Again, just want to lower this exposure. We're good. I, you know, if I had more time, I would mess with exposures, but I want to get these in. Save. We're going to call this final FD. Doesn't really matter. Entries. Little contest with lineups. Go by rank. Have the exposures. Download. Download entries. And then I'm going to enter these into FanDuel and DraftKings. Um, and that's the show, right? So I'm going to come back a little later, talk about late swap after lock, and uh, I'll, I'll uh, see you then. Okay. So we're at the last part of this video. And we're talking about late swap, right? So this is going to be, might not be the only late swap of the night for me, um, especially because Damian Lillard and Norman Hell are questionable. And if they are in fact out, I'm going to want to late swap them, right? But we do have some clarification on some news, um, which is this Kevin Porter news, right? So two things happened actually. So Kevin Porter, was out. We already knew that and did some adjustments based on that. Eric Gordon starting, Daniel House is starting. Okay. So it's the process for this is actually pretty simple because Saberson was actually going to do the heavy lifting for us. So one thing you want to do is you want to make sure that you don't have any of your adjustments still standing on these Houston players because we want to take into account Saberson's updates, right? And so what we're going to do is we're gonna hit refresh to update these projections. And do the same thing on Fandle too. So we're gonna reset these babies, refresh, and we're gonna have the latest, let's see, why did this happen? Okay. 
I see. So save as instance interpreting that we just these, we did. Okay. So we have Eric, Eric Gordon starting. We have Daniel House, Daniel House starting. Okay. Um, one thing we can look at is popcorn machine just to see, okay, is there maybe something here? Houston's gotten blown out a lot. So minutes here are kind of interesting, right? Um, and it seems like they do play a 10-man ten, ten rotation. So, um, you know, and they're terrible. So this will probably continue, right? Um, so we can expect a 10-man rotation here. I bet DJ Augustin is going to play some. Um, but, and one last thing is let's like look at Eric Gordon because sometimes these vets like this can have a minutes gap. So let's, again, we're doing the same thing that we do in our research process, right? Looking at game logs, we can see that he actually plays quite a bit, right? So um, given he's starting, this minutes projection is probably actually pretty reasonable. Um, it could even be higher, right? Um, we're projecting a lot of guys and it's Houston, so this is probably actually correct, right? Um, but I think one thing to think about here is just, okay, is there someone that you like more than Saber Sam, right? Um, I think that's something that's interesting is, you know, Kevin Porter Jr. is, does handle a lot of scoring, so... It's sort of this combination of Christian Wood is a pretty good scorer and they're going to be less offensively efficient. And so that might make it better for, you know, someone like Wood. So I don't mind being a little higher on him, especially if they play a competitive game. He's going to play a lot. Um, so maybe we just adjust him a little bit. But in general, we have these updates and, you know, we can be, we can be pretty happy with them. And maybe you can cross check Eric Gordon for some way. I, I think I'm going to boost him a little bit because I feel like this does seem um, a little small minutes for, for a guaranteed starter who plays these minutes in the past. So I'm going to do the same thing on FanDuel as well. So we're going to raise Eric Gordon a bit and we're going to raise Christian Wood a bit. And then we're just going to late swap, right? So we're going to go to our entry editor and make sure to upload your new entry file um, in case make sure you have it all, but all you have to do is click the light swap button, keep the same exposure. Sometimes I actually might lower ownership fade with this a little bit, just because at this point I'm swapping and other people are not, and our ownership projections are probably updating with that. So I think you can sort of lower it a little bit and maybe even lower min salary just to make sure that, um, you know, I, I'd rather have the lineups make a swap than not make a swap. Um, and then do the late swap. I'm going to do the same, same thing with FanDuel. And, you know, we're using the same lineup building process when um, you do this. And so you don't have to worry about your lineups changing that much. Um, so I'm going to late swap here. And, you know, it's, it's like important, right? Um, you know, if you if you if if there's something to be changed, like making that change is going to help you. It's going to help the expectation of your lineup. So you definitely want to do this when there's news to do it with, right? Um, and there is. So that's basically it. That's the whole part of our process. You just download these entries, and then that's it. We enter them into FanDuel and DraftKings. It's really easy. That's the deal. So that is the end of this video. My whole NBA process from start to finish. Probably not going to record what happens with Portland. It, it's pretty simple. It's going to be the same process. I kind of don't think Damian Lillard and Norm Bell are going to be out anyway. But that's basically my process, right? And um, I do think it's a really, really useful useful process because it can, you know, it just using all of Saber Sim's stuff and supplementing it with your own knowledge and research, it can help your lineups a lot. And if you, you, you use a late swap with that, especially on days when there's a lot of news or a big, big late swap situation, that's going to help you a lot. So um, I think using this process 
again, all these resources are free, is doing all this research, you're, you can be a profitable player very, very easily with all these tools. So I hope you enjoy this. I hope you learned something about, you know, how we expect you to use, use SaberSim, how you might use it. Everyone has a different process. I have a very particular process. I hope this gives you some ideas of how to add value to your own process. And again, I hope you enjoy this. Um, again, we have a seven day free trial for new members. If you're watching this video and you're new to SaberSim, try us out. And uh, I, I promise you'll have a good time. So thanks for watching and see you next time.